for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground, episode 34, printer is coming, hodl or be a trader, game theory evader, arbitrage aggregator, bullshit dissipator, nah, stack now or pay later. Pleb Underground, where the plebs speak freely, not watching their tongue like OMG really, explaining Bitcoin empirically, call it wax wing lyrically. I'm no strike dev VP, but definitely up to par, couple lines compiled, call me uncle rap star. Feel the beat, it's on repeat, just pure signal, no deceit. Long the wave, just like AM, long the rave until the AM. Time flies, it's now the PM. No leading politician, not that PM. Beyond the meridian, with arms like a branch Davidian. Nor the minister who says he's in charge, nor the minister who now says discharge. Sovereignty begins with what goes inside of me. I'm loud, brash and funny, but it's just a side of me. Stay on my flow, now please just ride with me. She gets it all, the girl right beside of me. Ego, death and rebirth, ego side of me. You still test my patience, sometimes I sigh to me. My identity front and center, I can't lose sight of me. I keep working for the principles, the limit is piety. When you enjoy that repetition, think. Entropic or addition, is it true conviction or degenerate addiction? Buying Bitcoin, get your dose in, triggering release of oxytocin, making you think that you love it, triggering greed, careful not to cover it. This is a world full of pain and suffering, normies stay sane as long as Netflix buffering. Karl Marx said religion was opiate of the masses, new psyops as each new month passes. Pure socialist gaslighting to nurture state dependency and undermine the family. They don't deserve clemency. Central banking has undermined it all. It was so much more than just a pitfall. I thought we evolved past Homo erectus, but normies think that the state will protect us. Men are meant to be the family protectors. Too many gone soy work out defectors. Bitcoin's not certain, nor a rap like most deaf. Stay in over going out, rather host guests. Are we the loudest because our critics are the most deaf? Maybe I'll live forever. Maybe I'll ghost deaf. Know your direction. Can't be a stray or waif. Keep assimilating independently just to be candid. Higher education is toast. Not even the dean's safe. This is Walton. I host the Pleb Underground Standard. Proof of work. Proof of hustle. Send the memorandum. Proof of lifting. Proofs the muscle. Quad erat demonstrandum. That was absolutely awesome, Walton. Absolutely amazing, dude. I, I, yeah, I say it every week, man. Every week, it's like the best one, and then you go and you outdo yourself. Guys, welcome back to the Pleb Underground. And joining us today is friend to the show, fellow Bitcoiner and Pleb, Mr. Mr. Honey Badger. I guess we'll just call you Mr. Honey Badger. Eve saw him Bitcoin. Eve, Eve Benaim. How you doing, my dude? We really appreciate um, you joining us. I'm, I'm doing fine. I just bought all my Dogecoin now. Um, yeah, yeah. So now, now I'm set. I'm good. I'm good. You I just know, wanted to come here to say that. I really appreciate that. And, and, and I was corrected. I was corrected on one of my uh, clips, actually, that uh, Doge, uh, Doge is actually deflationary, right? Because as the supply increases forever, they only, get, they only burn, uh, what is it? They only produce 5 billion every year. So, oh, so I'm, it I'm no good. Hard cap, it's deflationary. Yeah, I, I should. Bill, what's good. what's the limit of a of a of an of a of an arithmetic sequence where you have, you know, positive starting term and positive, uh, 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 uh yeah, yeah, and like and like a uh, yeah, like if if you have, what's the limit of a sequence where you have positive terms? <laughs> I don't know. I think you have to ask Silly, Bill Kwan like, about that. He would know. Like it's pe basically shit coiners. It's either people who don't understand math or it's people taking advantage of people who don't understand math. That's the whole of what shit coinery is. Very well said. Very well said. At the time of this recording, the block height is 784,389. The Bitcoin price, 27,900. Sorry, the fiat exchange rate, 27,900. Total public lightning capacity, 5,411.51. We're up from last week. We're at 5,300 something. Moscow time, 3584. And the chain rewrite days, 722. The numbers. 
Can I interject? Of course. <laughs> you need to, you need to start doing the um, uh, conversion rates in Swiss francs. In Swiss francs. <laughs> yeah, you need you need to compare it with something that makes sense. Oh God. And now now you're using the U.S. dollar, and you know, it next week sense. or next month, it, it's it's not going to be there anymore. So people will be confused. You have to start uh, switching to a, a you know a proper currency or something. Are you? I mean, still fiat. Are you suggesting I change to the yen or something? Yeah, you could go. You, yeah, you could go for the yen. That would be nice. That would oh, be funny. Gosh. All right, we're we're not we're, we're we're not continuing this. This is going the wrong direction. This is totally going in the wrong direction. Okay, hold on. First, let's let's dive into. Let's take a look at our numbers article today. Earth shattering numbers, and then we are going to dive into. I mean, the pound's been headed in the right direction against the dollar, like over the last you know few months. I've been quite pleased to see over the last six months. All right, our numbers article is this tweet from at Dax Trader. MSTR now now holding 4.17 billion in BTC. Even crazier is to see Bank of America loading up heavy in Q1, becoming a top shareholder out of nowhere, purchasing 59.5 million in shares. Right, so they're purchasing the shares of MSTR for the people that don't understand. It's not shares of Bitcoin, of course. Fidelity also loaded up large with 25 million purchases. Hmm? Capital Research also okay. added 11%. BlackRock and Vanguard positions also increased. All right, let's go take a look at Fidelity. So it looks like, what do they got over here? 97,000 shares of MSTR. Do Phil, do you mind going back to it? Do you mind going back to it? Just like okay. an, uh, you reference the exact wording that they have have there because i think there were a couple of couple of points this guy is called dax trader i mean it's not a surprise that um uh, his trader is in his name because he doesn't use the bitcoin quantity he just references the dollar value of the bitcoin so we ha i mean you could you know you can find out i believe it's 140,000 bitcoin which is one in every 150 um approximately right that will ever um be um discovered is point number one but point number two the, these these banks loading up um well gbtc is fucked right um and so if if you're an institution and you want bitcoin exposure there aren't many options for you other than loading up on micro strategy um because um barry silver um yeah got too greedy that's a very good point. I, I I do. I mean, I don't really care about any of this, right? But it's very interesting because to me, I you know what? But the uh, why is important, right? I was, talk, I was talking about this today. It 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 seems like a signal. It seems like a signal from the legacy system that you know Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin became a real well. So, you know, that's debatable, but kind of became this real asset to the legacy system in 2013, and has technically now existed for 10 years to them, right? Even though it's existed longer for us. Um, so I think that this is a signal that they're serious, that they're like, hey, this thing isn't going away and we can't ignore this. Eve, do, what do you, do you know, know how much GBTC the they had though before? Huh? Do you have any idea how much GBTC that any of these guys had before? No. That would be an interesting question. Yeah. What, what I'm thinking about um, MicroStrategy is that maybe that's that's what he wants, but he's kind of um you know painting himself in a corner because originally he wanted to protect his treasury and now the value of his stock and the value of his investors are how much bitcoin he owns and he, that's his treasury he's he's not supposed to stock up on bitcoin he's supposed to um put some money aside so that he can invest in his business eventually yeah, but the or business you know it's kind of flat right like it's, it's exactly a, it's a bit of a nothing like i think i think now we actually know that he cannot do business anymore except for for holding bitcoin the problem is whenever there is an etf people might be going away it's a very good point and and it's interesting because um i did see a tweet from somebody that indicated that you don't need an ETF because you have micro strategy. Exactly. It's, it's even better in a way, but you know, isn't there, a, isn't that, don't they have more Bitcoin than actually like the value of their Bitcoin is more than their share value. Isn't that right? Uh, yeah. It's, isn't it like 80%? I think uh, I was talking so about actually kind of the, it, it's like, it's like what GBTC was meant to be doing or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> It's absolutely so again, yeah. I, I'd like, I'd love to know how much GBTC these guys had before all of 
um, the last six months, year. Yeah, it's very interesting. Because right. it might just be that essentially they've just shifted their Bitcoin exposure amounts or percentages more into MicroStrategy as GBTC fell apart. That's you know what I think that that's I think that that's very plausible. And to your point, um, Michael Saylor, love him or hate him, does technically have a longer, um, more kind of like battle hardened um, track record. Right than, than Barry Silbert. I mean, let's be honest. At the end of the, you know, people can shit on Michael Saylor all they want. He he did go through the dot com bubble. His company completely, you know, imploded, and it he, you know, it did come back from nothing. Granted, it is technically what we determine as flat. Um, but once again, he has found a way to reinvent himself through Bitcoin. It, it yeah, is definitely. Helpful. You know? It is helpful for him that he, he he's only a ten to fifteen minute drive from from Langley. Should should he want any extra support? <laughs> so we're at that stage of the conversation now. <laughs> we're at that stage of the conversation. <laughs> it's the spook time. It is the spook part of the conversation. Although although um, all right. So so what are your thoughts, Eve? Michael Saylor. Uh well, I think if he is a spook and the government, the U.S. government is stocking up on Bitcoin, it's bullish for Bitcoin. So what are your, so let me ask you this, right? What do you think about the people who say that it's actually quote unquote dangerous that this one entity specifically is holding so much Bitcoin? I, I want to just start off by saying I personally don't give a shit because it's a finite uh, Bitcoin. There's never going to be more than 21 million. And this doesn't make it possible for MicroStrategy to create Bitcoin out of thin air, right? Which we all know. So for me, it's a giant nothing burger. At some point, this company may choose to divest of their Bitcoin. Indeed, there's going to be volatility in the price, but so be it. That's what happens when people are buying and selling and you're looking for a medium. So at some point, that value will shift, I assume. But if it doesn't, do I really care? Because it doesn't give them more control. Anyways, sorry, I just got to spill that all out before I forget it all. What are your thoughts? Personally, I don't care. Um, I don't find it dangerous. I don't necessarily like it. I mean, if, right. if there was an ideal scenario, I wouldn't go this way, but I don't think he's gonna just keep it forever like that. Or if he does, as I said earlier, he's gonna be stuck with it. It's just gonna be like one big, you know, gold standards of his company. It's gonna be, you know, he's like, like what uh, Luna was doing, backing up with Bitcoin or, you know, what Tether is supposed to do. So eventually he's going to want to sell or he's going to want to uh, collateralize some kind of, you know, expense with whatever he's keeping, but then he's going to get a loan out of it or something. And then he's going to go back into circulation. He's rich, he's investing. And as I told someone else, I don't remember who it was uh, earlier uh, today or yesterday, um, when he's uh, taking risks, people are saying he's stupid, and when he's successful, people are saying he's lucky, just like every other Bitcoiner. So he's taking risks and he's being successful with it, and you know, good for him. Agreed. Very good point. All right. Before we move on over to Rect and Hopium, we want to dive into some. We want to get to know our guest, right? For the people who, for the people who don't know Eve, right? I refer to him as Mr. Honey Badger. So. So Eve, would would you be kind enough to explain to the guests because I don't know if the guests know that you are the official unofficial creator of the Honey Badger logo. So a while back there was this uh, Twitter thread where people were talking about OPSEC, and I came up with the the concept of having a ictus for uh, Bitcoin. The ictus, if you, you've seen it before, it's that fish that people have at the back of their car. Um, it used to be a way to uh, signify that you were a Christian when there was uh, oppression against the Christians back, you know, Roman time or something. So the idea was to have uh, a Bitcoin logo that people who are into Bitcoin would know about it and people who don't know about Bitcoin would not, um, you know, see you as a target like the big B and I don't want to carry a big, you know, B logo uh, on my back all the time, um, you know, depending on where I am. So, so I did uh, that little honey badger thing and uh, I put it uh, on GitHub as a, I don't remember, but you know, you can copy it, you can do whatever you want with it. 
and now it's like the official and official you can use it you can do stuff with it you can print it on stuff or you know like um stickers whatever you want and uh in a way now it became way too way too recognized but uh still it's kind of cool because it doesn't have the big b and we can recognize it and hidden in the design there is a little uh, uh lightning bolt um because you know you kind of have to make a reference to a uh, lightning network so that's the story and um i don't know maybe you'll put a link to it or maybe you want to show the the uh 3d printed version that you have your or... shoulder we can see it over your oh, shoulder. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's true. And, and, and also, it's, Phil's yeah, got yeah. one too. Uh, uh, you exactly. can, you, you can too buy one uh, if you're listening or watching along over at Crypto Cloaks. That's uh, CryptoCloaks.com or CryptoCloaks.co.uk, and use the code Pleb Underground for five percent off your very own honey badger. You're gonna have to do that anyway. <laughs> no, that was so, awesome. so my interview was sponsored by Crypto. Your interview was sponsored by Crypto Clocks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, so Eve, that that is the look. That that is absolutely amazing, and I have to say that I really appreciate it, and I I love the hidden in plain sight aspect exactly. of the honey badger i totally love that so i thought you knew you it was over your shoulder the entire time yeah. i was like it's I, it's literally right it. there he knows this right and 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 then it was eventually no nope, he does not he does not know that it's there Excellent. i i i put it there for when there is a journalist who wants to have a chat with me and then you know <laughs> they say what is that thing that you have and then i explain to them you know that the world is going down but there is a a safety net and they can jump on it and everything so but yeah i completely forgot about it <clears throat> and so instead he's, anyway he's stuck on a pleb cast with us <laughs> yeah but um, but okay. all 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 this is the past i want to i want to say one thing uh yeah. first that story that that idea actually evolved and their gg um that super famous um excellent guy uh made a thing called upsex swag uh, which is a website that actually makes links and lists uh, all kind of swag that are OPSEC friendly, which I think is a super cool idea. So I don't know, I wanted to plug it there because I'm not related to it. And uh, more recently, one thing that I did that maybe you don't know, so I'm going to tell you because, you know, um, is an app called Satpile. Did we ever talk about that? Yes. So this is this is a watch-only wallet, which allows you to put uh, Xbobs and uh, individual addresses, and mm -hmm. um, you can you can plug it to your node if you want to be uh, secure. You can plug it to your node through Tor, or you can use another uh, explorer like uh, Mempool uh, Space or whatnot, and you can uh, check your addresses. So it's really good for people who are doing. Um, cold storage um, and or if you're doing DCA to your cold storage and you want to have your 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 sats going directly to that you know hidden thing that you have at, you know buried in your garden uh, in a box that is hermet hermetically sealed bitcoin's then... not in the signing device eve Come i know on, i know but that's my point you want you want to check uh... the address you want to check the address, right? Because you want to make sure that your DCA is You going. want to be able to generate the addresses, is what you're saying. And so, you want so to therefore, you need the XPUB. The, the XPUB needs exactly. to be... Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But that, that was a segue to my new venture, which is a DCA thing. So, oh. uh, you know, I, I was trying to introduce it super Wait, do you not mean FCA? Isn't it like Frank... Frank... Uh, no, wait. Frank... C -C 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 uh, how does it go? C -A go C -A C -A CHFCA, yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, it, it should be FCA because it's fiat, right? F fiat cost average. So yeah, I also think people usually misuse the term. They just mean they're saving in Bitcoin. It's it, because what they rather than like a lump sum, which is like like uh, if, if you have an amount to deploy, you know, to deploy, then deploying it immediately is lump sum. Choosing to spread out a lump sum over time is DCA. Saving regularly is not DCA. It's just saving. But it kind of is. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> no, if you're so, if you're buying regularly, you're trying to take advantage of maybe similar. You're trying to, you're trying to smooth out the, the 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 volatility exposure. Okay, but don't be a pussy. Just smash buy. But you're not. So also, what? 
you're not also going to have all the money that you will ever have. All exactly. Again. It's for people. It's for people who are still fiat mining. But yeah, I what agree. you're I'm, saying, I'm fiat mining as well. But like, exactly. I'm, I'm self-employed, so I don't get paid. Like, I, I get, you know, I get money when I get money, and I yeah, e try and, and save. Exactly. So, so the goal is not to DCA, but the result is that you're DCAing because you kind of do without even trying to do it. That's right. You know, even if you don't want to call it that, that's what it ends up being. You, you don't want yeah, a DCA. Okay, but there's no like smoothing. Like the idea of DCA is that no, you're of course, doing no, a, of course there is. a regular frequency such that you get um, some sort of smoothing compared to what the price is currently doing. Whereas, yes, if you just buy it, if, if you've bought Bitcoin more than once, there is an average buy price and, and that and that is related to the dollar cost or fiat cost or whatever. So, yes, but that's just, this is this is semantics at this point. It is. It totally exactly. Is. So, the so the end result is you didn't want to DCA. You didn't know that you were DCAing, but in effect, you actually DCA. That's right. Or, or FCA. Yeah. I All right. So it. so Eve. Tell us yes. what what is your new venture before before Walton cuts you off. What is your new venture? <laughs> I I wanted him to cut me off, and it was more interesting than what I'm about I'm about to, uh, yeah, than what I'm about to say. But um, so uh, in Switzerland we have uh, regulations that are kind of cooler than in most places in Europe, um, and so well, the idea I was. <clears throat> taxes and also uh, um, KYC. So um, a lot of uh, the quote unquote DCA apps uh, are using uh, Swiss regulations. They are based uh, in Switzerland, their activities, so that they can be um, KYC light, where you have like less relay, intrusion. for example. Like Relay, for example. Yeah. The problem with that is that you have to use either in Relay, you have to use their app, and I don't, I don't necessarily like that because I want to do it directly to my cold storage, for example. And I want to make sure that uh, the app that I use is like open source. So I'm not, I'm not trying to bash them. It's just that for me, it, it doesn't work. Um, or you're using something that has very uh, low limits because that's how you can be in the KYC light thing. So I wanted to do something where I can address people who want to have uh, Swiss KYC, which is a little bit lighter than, let's say, in France, for example, or in other places, but at the same time without that limit and with your own uh, wallet, with your own keys directly. So I uh, piggybacked on... Uh, Swiss Swan. Swiss Swan? He's saying Swiss Swan. Yeah. Ah, Swiss Swan, yes. In a way, yes. Uh, except even Swan, I think uh, you have to withdraw from them. Uh, you can do it automatically, but you still have to withdraw from them. It doesn't go directly to you. No, I think so, they. Can, I think they. I think they do do the thing where they. But I think it's they like do. they take okay. your XPub. I don't think it's open source, so like they take okay. your XPub or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and okay. I I don't know this from personal experience, but I believe that is the case. Um, so so anyway, my my problem with KYC is that I think um, people don't really understand that KYC is twofold one one is that it's uh, intrusive and one is that you know it's uh, your personal safety and privacy so the personal safety privacy should be addressed by either doing completely kyc less as in you know basic kind of thing or uh, coin joining afterwards and of course you're still going to be on a list which is not really good but at least you can coin join so that your transactions and everything is not tracked but if you really want to be uh, on and no, no, no list at all, then you really need to be 100% KYC less, zero KYC. And I believe the only one that can do that is BISC at, at this stage. You have other ones, but they're like with limitations and everything. Um, but I, I, I admire and, I, and I, I think it's really important that we have that on one hand. Peach. And also, sorry? Peach. Uh, Peach, Peach, uh, you're making transactions, uh, except if you're face to face with the person, someone has your uh, email address, your phone identifier and your IBAN. So it is still good. And the limitations in, in terms of amount are, you know, acceptable today, but they're not perfect. 
but somewhere somehow can be um, you know approaching Peach and say uh, I want to have uh, all your data for the last ten years, and uh, they have access to everybody who has interacted with everybody else. And the people that you uh, send the money to, if you are using a bank account, they have your EBAN. So you would still need to really go face to face. And and again, I'm not bashing on anyone. I think you know yeah, yeah. the more the the more the better. But when we see that uh, Paxful now is uh, closing shop uh, almost from one day to the next, um, I'm thinking you know what what's happening what's happening to the next ones. Um, so anyway, my point is I don't want to be the guy who says no KYC because I can't do it technically and I'm not good at it. Um, but at the same time, I want to say, if you're going to do KYC, you should be doing KYC and CoinJoin afterwards. But then at the same time, if you're going to do KYC, you want to do KYC with a company that has been there for, you know, uh, whatever, tens of years. So uh, like bull, it's, like, it's like bull Bitcoin then, because I, I mean, in a way, yes. Level, right. They use, I think they use Wasabi or something on the other on the exactly so so the thing is i'm i'm not doing uh, i'm not handling the fiat i'm not handling the the bitcoin i'm actually piggybacking on a company called bt that is uh based in switzerland that has yeah. you know really good bank relationship and everything nobody's gonna block your funds nobody's gonna steal your funds but i wanted to add that level of um you know set up and forget kind of thing and you know, get your stats and make sure that everything is working, um, but uh, that you don't need to do another KYC for that particular service. So my goal in the future is to be plugging in to um, other uh, companies, let's say Kraken, for example, uh, because everywhere that there is an API, you can be building something. And then you can kind of arbitrage between them to give better rates sort of thing. And then. People will do whatever they want to do, but uh, but the idea would be that they don't have to do a new KYC that will you know potentially leak or potentially uh, sell their data or whatnot. One issue I've had with uh, adopting any of these um, DCA uh, or automated DCA services is that quite often the percentage fees are relatively high compared to doing it yourself. Um, what's your model going to be doing on that that side? Theme? So, all all of them. Um, if you use all the you know referral and this and that, at the end the standard is one point five percent. So one point five percent. What we did was we negotiated upstream to have a better deal from uh, the the service provider, and then we add our commission so that in total it's one point five. Um, what we're building now is a referral program. So if you uh, refer uh, refer enough people that are your you know affiliates, uh, your friends, uh, you get uh, a discount, which would lead you to one percent instead of one point five percent. But at the end of the day, when Bitcoin does you know twenty five percent in one day and minus eighty four percent the next one percent is not going to make a huge difference but yes I do understand that especially if you're going to do it like every week or every month you want to make sure that you have something reasonable there's no kind I think of minimum like absolute amount it's purely percentage based so you could do small amounts DCA and not in accrue additional fees no it's uh, uh, 10 Swiss francs which um, because the conversion rate with euro, because it's euro and Swiss franc, um, the euro is is moving up and down sometimes compared to the Swiss franc. So it's, I forgot if we put 12 or 15 uh, euro per transaction minimum, I mean, and it's 10 Swiss franc. Wrecked over the last six months. Yeah, that's that's why we want <laughs> we wanted to have some kind of margin. But yeah, it's 10 Swiss franc per transaction. So you could do 10 Swiss franc per month. Or ten Swiss franc per uh, day, uh, if you wanted, uh, so, it would still so be one point five percent. Getting uh, um, wait, what? They'd be getting nine, what nine nine eighty five is what you're saying um, of Bitcoin. Minus, uh, I, I'm, minus I'm a, not minus a minus a um, minor fee. Well, if you're doing a hundred, you're gonna get. Oh, uh, sorry, from the ten, from the ten, I'm saying. Yeah, but but I'm, I'm not good. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. 
So Eve, um, is this uh, is this platform up and running yet? Is it? Yes. What stage is it at? So first, you can find it on my profile because, as you know, I'm finding weird names, and it's going to be difficult if you don't have a link. Uh, the name is Butanuki. Oh, okay, it is. That. Oh, I've heard yeah. about this, but yeah. I didn't know. Oh, it was yours. That's good. Okay, that's good. Well, okay. so okay. so you do remember the name. That's. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Wait a second. You can't forget a name I... like that, just so you know. Yeah, because it because it it followed me, and so I looked out and I was like, "What is this thing?" And I started looking. I was like. I'm confused. Oh, I realize now. Yeah, let's say Swiss made by by you, but I don't. Yes. Maybe I don't think that was there at the beginning. I don't know. Maybe it was. I don't know. Who knows? Well, we're gonna maybe post I, maybe I, in the show notes. So maybe I followed you just to troll you later. I don't know. Yeah, I don't exactly. Remember. Exactly. Okay. So that's so, so, so that's so it. I'm not reinventing the wheel, English but it's French dollar. Uh, no, English and French, uh, Swiss francs and euros. Yes, and we're we're working on uh, all other bunch of languages because we realize that there are lots of places that uh, people don't necessarily speak English properly um, or not enough to feel comfortable to do something like that. So we're we're working on all kinds of uh, of languages. The problem with the Fiat uh, gateway, though, is that uh, we're dependent on the business partner. So for the moment, it's Euro and Swiss francs because that's the bank account that they have. All right, Eve, that was absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for explaining that. We are moving on over to Wrecked. Up next, we have Wrecked, sponsored by Represent. RepresentLTD.com is where you can find a collection, um, sorry, a few collections um, of some excellent clothing. Uh, this is made by a Bitcoiner. Uh, four Bitcoiners, four fighters, uh, for people who are very passionate, for people who are working hard, for people to work out in, um, for people to work up in, right? For people to, who are building. Um, and it's really comfy. Um, yeah. Pretty much it. Oh, and, and you can get 10% off all of the goodies if you use the code PLEB Underground over at representltd.com represent for our first story in wrecked this week um we have uh everyone's favorite native american uh senator uh, uh i think that's i think that's the, the the title that she goes by um uh, grandma maybe i don't know there's a lot of old people right that seem to run your country um anyway um she was she was um she she basically she talked to someone about bitcoin um and it was kind of embarrassing um and I think we should have a look. With Bitcoin, there's no thing that backs it up. And and that's what makes it different. It's just belief. You and I assess. You assess the value is going to go down. I assess it's going to go up. And therefore, I buy. So it's. So I'm going to pause it there because. So Elizabeth Warren, I believe is her name, um, is, has just discovered the concept that there is no such thing as intrinsic value. And uh, value is ascribed to things by humans, uh, and and that doesn't just happen by one person. Uh, the price of something means there needs to be a market for things, which means there needs to be more than one person that wants something, because otherwise there would not be an exchange happening. Well done. Okay, uh, but doesn't wait? Isn't she worth like millions and millions, despite only having a salary in the hundreds of thousands? Uh, interesting. Okay. Anyway, back to the video. No, so it's more like this artwork. No, no, because at the end of the day, I can hang that thing on my wall. Right. And I can enjoy it or I can it. throw darts at it. Um, you could sell it for money. Sure you can. Right. I mean, there are features about it that are the same, but it's, it's not the same. And look, one of the things we have to remember about there are a lot of things that come within this crypto world. So, for example, we could be talking about instead of Bitcoin, we could be talking about digital currency. Now, that's something very different. I think that's different too. I buy that. I accept that. That's different. right, because yeah. that's a government-backed mm -hmm. um, uh, electronic transfer. And it can be denominated in dollars. It could be denominated in euros. It could be denominated in some new language that's made up. But that has Big something that backs point. it up. It has a government that says, if at the end of the day, there's a run on this stuff, everybody wants theirs out. The United States government promises 
there will be something to back it up. Um, and uh, that's what banks are about. There'll be somebody there to back it up. But with Bitcoin, that's not the case. Okay, so like, f firstly, like, shout out Magoo because it's only BBLs that should be backing it up. Um, but uh, to, to make the serious points, what like this is this is in, in, this is very embarrassing. Um, do, what? Yeah. I I th I think that's the end of the segment. What? 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 Like what? What just happened there? What? I, I, that was absolutely. Oh, dude, you can't throw darts at Bitcoin. Bullseye. Oh man, that's it. We should just pack up. Can't throw darts at it. It has qualities, but you see, they can't, they cannot, they cannot handle Bitcoin. Oh, well, we could invent something entirely new. Not Bitcoin. Government digital transfer. Not Bitcoin. I thought she was talking about Ethereum and she's like, oh, there's a state backed um, blockchain, um, you know, uh, controlled by some small group of elites, um, blah, blah, blah. JP Morgan owns everything. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, anyway, next on Wrecked, uh, we have uh, everyone's favorite uh, olive oil uh, fan. Uh, and um, I mean, it's kind of an embarrassingly shaped person, but n nonetheless, um, he's, he's a shit coiner and, and that's why he hates Bitcoin. Uh, and it's been revealed um, that actually he, he does indeed have a short against Bitcoin. So, uh, Taleb. Uh, you block me, even though I've never interacted with you. Uh, I don't care. Um, What's everybody? He's fragile in the scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. Despite having a book called, isn't it, isn't it called Anti Fragility or something or Anti Fragile? Um, it, it, these jokes write themselves. Um, yeah. Wreck. It's a good book. It's a good book, by the way. It is. It's a yeah. Good it's also like I'm not gonna lie. One of my favorite books is Principles yeah. by Ray Dalio, and he doesn't have any principles anymore. So, exactly. so you exactly. know, it, it, yeah. Uh, people can produce great work and then and then become retarded um yeah i don't know does it happen at a certain point i thought about this earlier when we were talking about mentioning Gigi. i was thinking i think Gigi has the highest number of followers on twitter of any non shitcoiner like that the, at some point bitcoiners maybe accrue a certain um following and they get bought in, like even even to some degree, Adam back, right? Like 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 the the, the association with Tether, for example. Um, I, I don't know. There's, there's there are there are kind of different levels to to these things, and I, I don't know. I think some people seem to they they seem to just get sucked into shit coins, or they disappear, right? Maybe they pretend to shit coin and then disappear. I think Trace may or may have done that personally. Anyway, what are your thoughts, Eve? On the I think I think Trace definitely uh, pretended to disappear. I I think um, and I hope that it was uh, something that he did on purpose and not something that you know people did to him. But uh, uh, back in the days, I I was trying to find a way to uh, have a personal canary. You know, like you have a canary on your website, and if you get subpoenaed or if you get uh, you know a gag order, you can remove the canary uh, line and people would know that you are under duress kind of thing. Um, I think a lot of people have been, uh, you know, even, even Nick Carter recently, like you can't, you can't, you can't know as much as you, you know, when you're like Trace or Nick or uh, a few other people and suddenly become an idiot. It, it just doesn't work. Um, I, I think Taleb, um, what do you think Lop story is then? I mean, he was sort of like a shit coiner for a while, maybe with grin and things like this. But like, yeah. I don't know. Like to me, to me, Casa adopting Ethereum was a, a, a really a, a kind of a strange move. It's very very strange. But I think when you're running a company, um, you know, you have all kinds of people that are breathing on your neck and forcing you to do things you wouldn't necessarily want to do. And at the end of the day, you still need to pay the bills and not everybody can be, you know, not profitable forever. So I, I would I would classify that as, you know, the unfortunate compromises. Um, but yeah, it, it, it really sucks. It removes a lot of credibility. 
Um, he's fighting for his credibility because at the end of the day, he's very knowledgeable and is, I think he's still a net positive. It used to be my favorite website to point people to, right? Like, and I he's, don't feel like I yeah. can do it anymore. Like, it's a shame. It's a real shame. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's very unfortunate. And it's, it's similar with Andreas. He's, you know, he's a super knowledgeable guy. He's onboarded so many people. And then one day he said, yeah, but you know, I'm agnostic. No, you're not. If if you reach that level of understanding, you cannot be. So, do people get to a level where they kind of buy immunity? That's kind of what I'm t saying. Uh -huh. do, do they get to a point where they've done enough for Bitcoin? Now they can shitcoin because that seems to no, be not... kind of a take by some people, right? Like you mentioned Nick Carter. Like I don't think you said Breedlove, but maybe that's another one. Like, yeah, but... I don't know. Is is there some Breedlove? You know, I don't understand why people give him a pass because before he shitcoined and he really rock pulled people, um, what did he do? Like, okay, he, he's eloquent. Good for him. You know, he's eloquent. He, he, he didn't do a tenth of what Andreas did. He didn't do even no, a tenth of what, yeah. of, of what Roger Ver did, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, even though Roger Ver did it inadvertently, he didn't. But then he did then a lot was doing. more bad. Like Roger Ver yeah, then almost. like really undid like some of the good yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. But you know, Brad Love. You know, I'm I'm gonna lie. Then I'm gonna mute people. Then I'm gonna I, I meant just them. more in the same bracket of like I don't know these 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 people that go from I don't know having a smaller following to then having six figure followings on Twitter yeah. that then that then seemingly get get bought or or I don't know they 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 yeah they get they 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 buy into their own greed like I think they smell their own fart that's it I think it's the uh I don't remember who coined that maybe it was their GG uh the uh because GG I think is at, at the top of like the the in terms yeah, of I'm, followers but I'm hasn't done forward. this and so, like, yeah, I don't know if GG if GG starts shitcoining, I'm going to be very concerned. Like, I, 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 I know, yeah. I know, and I'm going to yeah. be very sad. But uh, I think it's a Bitcoin derangement syndrome. It's uh, somewhere, somehow, it gets to your head. Yeah. And uh, it it might. They not think they're be bigger than rich. Bitcoin. Something like that, I guess. I don't know. I'm 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 fighting against uh, what is it BDS? Uh, yes. Con constantly. Because, you know, you, you start and you think you're more clever than other people because you've been in the scene for longer than them or because, you know, you did something and they haven't or whatever. And, and then you start becoming arrogant. And then next thing you know, someone tells you about Mimble Wimble and you say, well, I don't understand it, but the guy who tells me about it seems to be super clever. And then, you know, next thing you know, you, you start saying stupid things. I, I'm, I'm not... And, and also you have an opinion on everything because since you have one opinion that turned out to be very, very good, of course, everything else that you're saying, you know, smells genius. best. You're a genius because you're saying you need to be a vegetarian and then you're a genius the next day because you need to, to, you need to be carnivore. I, I'm not really sure. I think it's also uh, Bitcoin reveals human nature. And, and to be honest, uh, there is their GG and there is Odell. And if those two guys are falling, that's it. I'm, I'm yeah, but you could it. argue that Odell's kind of like on the edge already with like the VC fund and that sort of stuff. Like it, it's no. all again. There's, there's, there, there isn't kind of clear lines maybe for some of these things, and unless you're Dita, I don't know. You know, you know, back back in the days, uh, Google's uh, motto was "Don't be evil," and then you know one day they off. became super big and they took it off, and that's super disappointing because you're saying this is very fiat you know i decided this is the line in the sand but then when i reached the line i decided to you see it everywhere you know, you see make it everywhere. a new line but it's it's not it's not okay it's not okay if, if you have a family it's not okay if you have a life but then again it's okay for a lot of people i just don't don't want to be with them that's but i think I'm this is because can... fiat fiat drives cuckery because if you have a system where you know those closest to the money printer ben benefit more than more than others then there will inherently be um a, a selection hierarchically for political quotient where people uh, who, who are better at kind of sucking up and manipulating others um rise to the top and and benefit from that spigot um over those who are necessarily uh, intelligent or pro or producing because it's not about the work it's about showing some work or, or or making some sort of 
relationship that isn't necessarily about doing the work. Yeah, but Trace has done a lot of work and the reputation that he got, he got it by being really respectable. Mm -hmm. And where is he now? I mean, I, I like I loved his like credit contraction is is yeah. what helped me understand the problem more than anything else. Like, go, but, yeah. but where is he mm. now? He's he's not running for office. If he was, you would say, yeah, okay, you know, he turned his. But maybe he doesn't yet. Maybe it's you know, you wait. He waits another five five ten years, and then and then he really can you know deploy yeah. kind of serious capital. I think I think he did a boating accident to himself. You think he actually lost his big, big not, Bitcoin? Not no, 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 no. I, th I think he he threw his time. reputation yeah. overboard. That, exactly. That's what I think. That's what I think. Yeah. Just just so that people leave him alone and he can you know live his life. Yeah, he, but, he killed his reputation. He yeah. yeah. Quite possibly. Yeah. Um, but but Nick Carter didn't do that. No, no. Nick or, Carter or just maybe, got wrecked because he was it because yeah. they were a shitcoin fund. Like that's just yeah. yeah. There, no, there are some people who kind of pretend to be bitcoiners, but they're running shitcoin funds. Like less like the what are they called morgan creek guys like you know yeah yeah, yeah exactly sort of or maybe sort of or thing. maybe he did and he's so good that we believe that he didn't no no you saw you saw like those terrible ha haircuts and things like it's that yeah, yeah. that doesn't happen by chance <laughs> that's true that that is intentional um but just to bring it back to uh to nasim taleb um so another book that he wrote that's fantastic is fooled by randomness um that that I mean, I've read his whole inserto, right? Like all five of those books, Better Cro uh, Procrustes, um, Fooled by Randomness, Anti-Fragile, um, and I can't remember the other two or the other one. Well, Black, Black Swan and Black whatever. Swan. I'm sorry? And whatever, the last yeah, one. I don't remember the last one, but, but still, that stuff was absolutely incredible. And it reminds me very much, it reminds me very much of the, the, the idea that... Um, there's often very crappy people that produce very high quality work. And you have to be able to, in some cases, you have some to of them just steal it, right? Copy, co copy, paste and put an H in the corner, right? Like some, well, but maybe not, maybe not. That's the thing you have to differentiate. I guess that's what you wanted to say. You have to differentiate the person and, and its work. That's right. In some cases you have to, right. And, and in that case, don't get me wrong, but like, it's, it's very difficult to reconcile the person that writes fooled by randomness you know, and the person who writes anti-fragile to the asshole on the internet that blocks everyone and that writes an intro to a book he never read, doesn't understand Bitcoin, but sells a course on risk management for $8,000 a pop. Like, you know, it's it's very difficult to reconcile that. But here we are. This is the timeline. That is the person. <laughs> you know, so. I mean, he, he seems to be, uh, he, he must know a lot about risks because otherwise um yeah his, his his calculation on um cardiac um comorbidity um would, would might might return a you know different value um he's on the edge anyway. he's leaving on the edge That's right. uh yeah yeah i don't think there's an edge to a sphere but anyway um yeah so f finally uh one more story for wrecked this week uh i'm sharing a tweet for myself uh, sharing an, uh, a link to an Apple Insider article. Um, I think Apple are pretty based because the, the, the white paper is hidden inside on every single Mac in the world if they're running some particular Mac OS or, or version or later. Um, now, why is that in wrecked? Sounds like quite good news, right? I mean, I was going to think... Whole... I think Fiktoshi is wrecked because if you say that you own something, there is this concept that you have to def and and believe that you own you know things like trademarks. I think you have to defend the trademark. Um, and if Apple are putting this into all their Macs. Um, they would be infringing on the trademark um, that he claims to own over Bitcoin, uh, in which case he's going to have to sue them like he's been suing a bunch of other people. And I don't think he can afford to sue Apple, who I believe have, you know, n what is it, like nine, nine, nine figure sums in the bank? No, more. 
Maybe more, more, is it, more. I, I think it's hundreds of millions like or billi billions, like uh, huge numbers. Like, is it hundreds of billions? I can't even remember now. But there's, they have huge, huge, huge amounts of money, like way more than the paedophile backer that CSW has. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it can't happen. So, it, it, but he has no choice. He has to. He either has to take it, or he's actually acknowledging that that he's not Satoshi because Satoshi would, of course, you know, um, continue to to reinforce his. Um, appeals over the ownership of Bitcoin and trademarks, etc. Craig's fucked. Th there's really no other way to say it. I mean, he does not have... Fuck Toshi. Yeah, he does not have the war chest that uh, Apple has. So good luck. And to your point, to your point, this is like a checkmate. Now, uh, before we go to Eve's comments on this, I want to bring up, there was a tweet from Ant um, that I thought was very interesting and very thoughtful, explaining that, um, you know, the way that Apple products are made, it's, you know, everything is very thoughtfully designed. Okay? I agree. I and, agree. I saw this tweet. Yes, exactly. And I, I totally agree. This was not, this was intentional. Okay. This is complete. Yeah, but Steve Jobs is not Satoshi before people no, start going on that one. That's right. And that is the piece that we're going to write. Like Steve Jobs is not Satoshi. Okay. Like Steve Jobs was a businessman. Steve Jobs. Yes. I understand that he went to Berkeley and everything like that with the Waz, but Waz is the one who built the boards. Waz is the one who built the computer. Okay. Like it, it wasn't. It, it, it also wasn't Steve Jobs is woke as fuck, right? Like Steve Jobs was the, was the Pixar guy who then became the biggest uh, shareholder in Disney. And so like he, he drove a lot of this like woke culture stuff. I don't think like that meshes too well with the, yeah, with, with what came with Bitcoin. He's a different type of genius, right? He's a different type of genius. He's not the genius that created, that created Apple in, in the same way that the Waz did. Isn't he a Fiat product though? Like he's a he's a he's a tweaker. He's a, but he's good at and he's good at pitching sort of thing. Like is he, is he the actual? I don't know. He is technical, well, but he's he, a businessman. He put man. he put the the uh, music labels and everyone like that. He put them on their knees. So business wise and pirate wise, he he's kind of an agitator. He yeah. or he was, but but yeah, he's still Fiat in a way, but um, a good kind of Fiat. If it was if it wasn't for him, you would still, you know. I mean, buy. to me, Bezos is like a good kind of fiat, where it's like you're you're solving a, a true a true kind of, you know, thing. People want people want convenience, um, and people want to be able, to, you know, go to one place and buy everything. Essentially, like there's there's lots of um, businesses where businesses in the real world where you save people time, um, yeah, will will often make money. Yeah. But it doesn't prevent you from being a pirate. Correct. Yeah. I'm sorry. What were you going to say about Steve Jobs before? I'm very curious. Like just just before, because you were saying is, he, because he's very good. You? Sorry. Who is you? I think he means you. Oh, Eve. Eve, you were no Hugh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, or you. No you. No Eve, you were about to say something about Steve Jobs like a, a minute or so ago. Do you remember what it was? It was something about him being uh, a good, uh, like good for you know, good fiat uh, in a way. He, he's a, he's a, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a billionaire. He's a, a guy who is running, as as we said, Pixar and whatnot. But at the same time, every time he did something, he did it in a way that was, uh, I don't know, hurting the compromise and hurting the uh, the status quo. Uh, hey, look, I, I'm I'm sitting here like I'm not hating on Apple. Like I'm this this is running on a Mac Mini. I've got a, a an iPad on my well, lap, an iPhone next to me. Like I like Apple. They solve. They solve this issue of kind of things connecting together. I know people say, "Oh, you got to buy a million connectors," but not, to me that some of the stuff more recently like being able to airdrop between devices, like or copy and paste b between devices, like some of these some of these again it's saving time enabling better flow you can make a lot of money anyway he he's he's not satoshi that's for sure <laughs> um th those who were there i don't remember when it was the 2014 or something when people started smashing their iphone if you remember that because because they one day from one day to the next they removed all the uh, bitcoin apps and then it came back um, so yeah, Apple, Apple is not necessarily pro Bitcoin 
as a Bitcoiner would like it to be. Mm. But it might be in a way of saying, you know, the same way they're saying, we love the US, we love California, we're building, you know, all our headquarters and everything, but technically we're incorporated in Ireland or Ill of Man or something so that we don't pay taxes. So that way, I, I can see them embracing Bitcoin in a way that, you know, the same way as, uh, as MicroStrategy did. It's very interesting how this is all playing out. I, I, I don't know yeah. how many people would have would have had um, Apple, every Apple computer having the Bitcoin white paper on their bingo. Yeah, card. why don't Apple oh. buy a shitload of Bitcoin? Who knows? Uh, next time I talk to whoever is in charge, I'll, I'll ask them. To, to, to me, it's the kind of it's fiat cuckery, right? It's like it's like the same reason that I don't know. I mean, because of, because of what's happening with Elon, people are like, oh, you know, you can't kind of if you if you kind of fuck with the state too much, you 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 know, you kind of get a bit wrecked because they they they're slightly more powerful. Like no matter what company yeah. you are, you you get rugged, um, or you can be, you know. Well, think think about what happened to uh, what's his name uh, Zuckerberg, or Jack you know, Ma in China, right? Well, like, I mean, now, yeah. now you see Alibaba breaking up, having like he's he's now been seen in public for the first time in months and months and months. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, like at some point, business people get, and this is why again why I kind of believe that Sailor is a spook because at some point they get to a level where there will be someone tapping on their shoulder to have a conversation because their business interests may have kind of uh overlap with uh geopolitical plays yeah but he's that's the thing he's also not um he is not building so much on bitcoin or he's not doing stuff with bitcoin he's just buying it and he's, he's running a conference for bitcoin and, and lightning um um I think kind of integrations for companies and this sort of thing. Um, yeah, that's true. He did that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I, I do, I do think. I don't know. I think I, I don't think he, again. I don't think sale is necessarily good for Bitcoin, but I don't think it matters whether an individual is good or bad for Bitcoin. No, no, no. Of course, but uh, I was th thinking about this, the spookness of it. Um, when when Elon bought Bitcoin, I mean uh, Tesla. Just before that, he was playing so much with Bitcoin on Twitter and then suddenly he stopped and he went to Dogecoin and probably because, you know, legal called him and said, dude, you can't do that. You already, you already got, you know, called once because you were saying you want to make your company private and, and uh, they or told 20 you a share, you, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that you he, but he likes market market. manipulation. That's the thing. I think he likes yeah, yeah. Doge because he likes fucking with people. People he, get to a certain yeah. point where they they can already afford to buy everything, or things get given to them. So the only the way they get their kicks is by taking things from people. Now you might see that, um, you know, market manipulation inside of trading. You know, like kind of whale games. But you also see, you know, people taking, you know, liberties from other people. You see a lot of. Um, yeah, corruption um, once people get to these sort of levels of wealth that I think are only possible on on a fiat standard. Yeah, but he, he didn't like, OK, the SEC or whoever came and knocked at his door when he did that. But they didn't call him to t testify in front of Congress like they did to Zuckerberg when he when he announced Libra. So it's it's kind of a different game when when uh, Facebook announced Libra and you know him and Marcus were called in front of Congress and Senate or whoever and you know it was really like a big arm wrestle where they told them you can't mess with us if you start doing whatever you're planning to do and you're announcing to do and you think you're going to get away with it it's not going to work whereas when Tesla bought a lot of Bitcoin and MicroStrategy bought a lot of Bitcoin eh you know you can't throw a dart at it. You can't. You can't hang it on your wall. So you can do whatever you want, but don't go too far. You can't. You know, it's like. Do you, are you familiar with that uh, tale of Icarus who flew too too close to the sun? Absolutely. Wait, there's a, there's a guy around here called Coin Icarus. I don't know if you've heard of him. <laughs> well, he was very silent. So I wanted to make sure he was following and not falling asleep. Oh no, I'm not falling asleep at all. <laughs> not at all. No, he just doesn't have the same like uh, problem that I do. <laughs> I let we people finish when they're talking. Yeah. 
It's an old no, art. It's fine, but it's fine. But Walton also comes up with some great points that I totally don't even come close to thinking of. So this is how we compliment each other, you know? It's beautiful. It is. All right, speaking of which, this wraps up the rec segment, and we are moving on over to... Wait, just final comment. Just the final comment. Fuck shit coins. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, Phil, what are we going to? <laughs> we are moving on over to... The Hopium! The Hopium! The Hopium is brought to you by Crypto Cloaks. Check them out, CryptoCloaks.com. Also serving the EU, CryptoCloaks.co.uk. Don't forget to use Pleb Underground for 5% off awesome 3D prints such as the 3D printed grenade. You can store your open dime. You can get the bigger one and store a full signing device. Don't forget to check them out. CryptoCloaks.com. Don't forget to use the code Pleb Underground for 5% off. That is CryptoCloaks.com. All right, guys, this week on The Hopium, we are going to take a look at a video from a tweet from Wall Street Silver. And the video is none other than Christine Lagarde um, yeah, talking about the virtues of, you know, of a digital currency, a CBDC. But the reason why I think it's Hopium is because it's really it's really them coping with what they can't stop. So I, I just find it to be projection. I find it to be weakness and I find it to be absolutely hilarious. So it was only a couple of weeks ago. They were blaming infl inflation on people putting up prices, which they have to do to earn more because things cost more way. Yeah, of course. It, look, it, 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 the goalposts are moving, right? The dartboard is moving. It, it's they, they can't seem to stop or catch anything, but, but look, we're rest assured it's someone else's fault and and the ecb has a solution they always have a solution right it doesn't matter if it's someone else's fault it doesn't matter if the explanations that they give make no sense or don't exactly fit they still have a solution yeah and and remember guys you already know that christine lagarde is willing to break all sorts of financial laws and go to jail or i don't know if she did she, but she certainly broke some financial laws you, you know she's willing to do that to further her cause and so you know if, if you trust her uh, and she's got your 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 interests in mind uh, then, then that's pretty a good bet right phil yeah yeah i agree you, you could trust these people and on that note let's let's take a look at this video all right, here's the tweet. ECB President Lagarde describing the Euro CBDC and controlling payments. It is as bad as it sounds. Let's find out. I haven't watched this yet, okay? So. Well, I have a question I'm, about, I'm, I'm also a good um, user of uh, electronic money. So my question, uh, you're in introducing the electronic Euro, as I know. Yeah. So yeah. how can I... Um, how can switching to an electronic currency help? Well, two things. Number one, it will be decided in October. So we are preparing the ground. We want to be ready. Um, we want to be trained, but it will not be decided until October 23. Red October. Reason I'm personally convinced that we have to move ahead is a situation like the one we are in now. We are mm -hmm. dependent on the supply of gas by a, a very unfriendly country. Mm -hmm. I don't want Europe to be dependent on an unfriendly country's currency. For instance, I don't know, you know, the Chinese currency, the Russian currency, the mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. or dependent on a friendly currency, but which is activated by a private corporate entity like, you know, Facebook or like uh, Google or anybody like that. I'm a user of Bitcoin too. So I had bought it uh, when it started and uh, I, I hope that uh, it also will work in through the special system. And uh, I know there are many protests in Europe uh, against uh, the electronic euro. Uh, what is the reason? You know, it's it's the beauty of Europe. It has different uh, positions. If you ask in Northern Europe, for instance, uh, in the Netherlands, they're quite happy to see the e-euro coming. 
Mm. If you ask a young German um, man, he'll say, yeah, fine. Mm. As I said, I don't want Meta, Google or Amazon to suddenly come up with a currency that will take over the sovereignty of Europe. Okay, we're, we're going to stop it right there. Hold on. Can I firstly say that this this might be my favorite Sasha Baron Cohen to yeah. date? Um, <laughs> um, it's 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 it, it's it's kind of a little bit like Borat, but not quite. Like it's it's a good it's a good Sasha Baron Cohen. Um, it's in, it's impressive that he bought Bitcoin so early. Uh, congratulations to you, sir. Um, uh, yeah, it's there's some good deflection there, right? She she um w w when pe when when people are complaining about protests, you talk about um cultural um and uh you know diversity essentially. We we celebrate diversity of opinion. Um, uh, is the response to oh we don't like what you're doing? Well, we celebrate your diversity of opinion. <laughs> it's a good one it's a good one right like it is a good it's one. all fucking gaslighting guys as you know we we have to start using that we have to start using that when we disagree with people we're just going to start to celebrate the diversity of their opinions really appreciate what you have to say there <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a mind fuck and and what's what i find absolutely hilarious what i find hilarious because I, I i know i wouldn't be able to say it with a straight face i'm i have to applaud her she's a fantastic she's fantastic at delivering uh the, the, this type of messaging but um the idea that uh, we don't want a private entity issuing the money, but hey, but they're happy with J.P. Morgan and Ethereum, right? And, and and the IMF who issues SDRs, which who's that controlled by? Is that that that's a wait problem. on and what isn't the ECB private? Like I thought most central banks were private. Maybe the ECB isn't, but like all the other ones are. It's it's public. No, so the thing is this, right? It's public when they're explaining who the enemy is. Okay, when they're explaining who what the problem it's, is, it's public when things are going wrong, yeah. and it's private when things are going good, right? Good Eve, job, finance. Eve, you're also across the pond from me. Both of you guys are across the pond from me. Uh, what what do you what are your thoughts on on what you've seen come out of the ECB uh, in the last few years? Surprising. Yeah. Well, no, it, that. That's the thing. It, it doesn't surprise me anymore. It's 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 going the way it's supposed to be going, which is you know towards the wall, and the wall is coming closer and closer. Um, but nothing nothing is surprising. What what is surprising is that she's French, right? And uh, and she has she 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 is I don't know influential in France. Uh, in general, as as herself and everything, and of course she she reads the news in France and everything. People who see that in France, at the same time, they see what's really happening every day today, like now, where you know uh, streets are on fire and people are being hit like crazy, and they're you know throwing stones at cops who end up in hospital and uh, the garbage collection don't work anymore. So people are actually burning garbage on the sidewalk because it's unbearable in terms of the smell and the rats and everything you have. Guys, and this is meant to be Paris. This isn't New York City we're talking about here. This is, meant, this is a culture, a culture capital yeah, yeah. of the world here. It's, it's, it's just crazy. And at the same time, they are telling you, yeah, but everything is going to be fine and we don't want Meta to be in charge of things. Well, you know, then be in charge of things and make it work. Because um, like yesterday or the day before, I was I was watching uh, French news, like a, a French um, a TV channel that, that talks about finance. And, mm -hmm. uh, and they were saying, yeah, um, what was it? The perceived inflation in the people that they uh, they uh, surveyed is 18% in France, and they were saying, but fortunately, yeah. the real the real inflation is a third of it. Yeah, but there is no bigger lie than CPI. There is no bigger yeah. lie than CPI. Yeah, we have the same bullshit here. It's like, oh, it's like 10%, and like, oh, it's 10.1%. No, it's like 20%. Like, I don't know, or maybe know. more. Like, how much is food going up? Like, how much I, is energy know, going it, up? If, if they're saying good news, it's it's only a third of 18%. I mean, it's 6%, and 6% is three times what they're saying that should happen. And even if it wasn't a lie, the fact that they're lying and they're, you know, covering and they're, you know, uh, rounding the edges, whatever. But at the end, 6% is huge. 
And if at 6% and fire in the street, people don't realize that there is a problem that people would rather trust Meta than you know their own central bank and government, you, you really have a problem. Yesterday, yep. the, the French Senate passed something which uh, fortunately the law didn't pass. Um, they wanted to uh, block the prices for a whole bunch of, uh, uh, you know, first, first uh, how do you call that? the products like bread and water and oil and electricity and fuel and whatever, like first first necessity uh, product, they wanted to uh, uh, cap the price for it. And we, we have seen through history, when that, that, when that start happen, um, you know, it's a straight line to hyperinflation and blood in the street and famine. It's and, like uh, and, and it's it's funny yeah, you talk and... about the 6%, right? You talk about 6% for inflation, but I think the more important 6% is all these mortgages going from, say, 2% to 6% across yeah. the Western world, right? Because then the, then there's going to be a collapse of all these housing markets, and uh, which isn't going to work. Like, And so th that then triggers um, all these reversals. And we've just seen that in the UK, right? That they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna stop raising everywhere. rates. Exactly, because they have to do this. So they're going to be going backwards and forwards for the next however. I, I always think the Austin Powers meme with the, you know, the little truck stuck yeah, in yeah. the corridor, <laughs> right? Be between print and cause more inflation. And, uh, but, but then of course you then have to right cut raise the the, the interest right, sorry, raise the, raise the rates and 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 stop printing um yeah. but then you then cause um all the companies to get rid of uh jobs uh and people can't afford to pay their mortgages and the stock market crashes uh and everyone thinks that they're poor and would uh just you know lose all everything and their confidence in government so then we go back to printing again and then we cause inflation and then uh, then we have to reverse and yeah it's fucked, isn't but, it? But my, my point was, she she knows all this. Yeah. And and Elizabeth Warren that we saw earlier, she, she knows Psychopaths. everything that's happening. And she's, I don't she's know about seen, Elizabeth Warren. Well, <laughs> no, but like, seriously, she, she knows about Silicon Valley Bank. She knows about Credit Suisse. She knows about, you know, unemployment rate. She knows about all this. Everybody knows about all this. And, and all those people, they're still gaslighting us like we don't know. And some people are still believing them because, you know, they're in power. Obviously, they know better than you. But this is because of central banking, Eve. This is what I'm saying earlier, that the incentives it's, it's drive it. This political yeah. manipulative behavior is selected for because it gets you access to this 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 wealth generation but only for those people at the expense of yep. everyone else right like that but, but it this doesn't is work the problem anymore. so it's how do we how do we truly kill central banking does bitcoin truly kill central banking it's a way out for at least you and your loved ones but does it and happen like, are there enough people that do, do we need enough people to adopt it yeah, but it's like the internet and Facebook and whatnot. You know, you're gonna have. You the, think it the, happens? Just it, happens. It will. It will eventually happen. It will. It will happen because more and more people are starting to ask questions, and uh, you, you know, like one one of the the video that uh, could be in the Hopium, like side by side with the one from Lagarde, is the one from uh, Augustine Carstens. Oh yeah. In that in that event when he's saying. You know, like uh, the, the central bank digital currency is great because we're going to have more control and we, we will know exactly like everybody who is spending a hundred bucks. We know exactly what they're spending. And um, some people see it as, you know, wrecked or like something dangerous or horrible. And uh, I see it like hopium because every time I show that to someone, I'm, I don't even have to iron spill them. Like uh, the, the reaction is instantaneous. They, they, they can see black and white, the guy who is in charge of central bank, of central banks saying, we want to create a dystopian nightmare and like nobody will have privacy. Uh, it's, it's like, it, he's, the op he's the bizarro uh, cypherpunk. He's the opposite of the cypherpunks. Whatever and if you want to understand what- the eyes. If you want to understand what the word hyperinflation means, all you need to do is Google Augustine Carstens, and you can see the first example of a human hyperinflating to its limit. I'm, I'm not commenting on that. No, it's just it's just so scary. Though. I'm neutral. I'm neutral. Yeah, exactly. But I, I mean, chaotic neutral or lawful? It it's just it's just really scary stuff, right? That these people. Um, don't see anything wrong like think about it right like no they do they, they do see it they do see it 
No, they're it's psychopaths, Phil. They think they're guardians of humanity. Honestly, they're, they're, psych they're, they're people that think they're, they have the tools they're um, and, and the kind of yeah. benevolent um, mindset to, to help humanity. And even if, I, even if I don't manage it, well, then maybe I'm just like Jesus and I'm, I'm some sort of like, I, I'll, be, I'll be, you know, revered for like, there's, there's a lot of, again, they, why? Because like the, well you see this religion's been undermined all all across the western world and for many the state is is their religion the government is is their lord and protector and so no wonder these people have god complexes because they're being treated as such we have a lot of work to do <laughs> yeah. there's there is a lot of work to do there's you know bitcoin fixes a lot of stuff right it fixes the money um but the reality it doesn't is fix cucking you need to stop yeah, cucking exactly. like like pe people people respect cucking. yourselves respect your time people have to choose to fix themselves people have to choose yeah, exactly. to higher quality thoughts and have higher quality actions people have to make those active choices exactly you, you can you can that. bring the donkey to the to the water but you can't make him drink we fix the money, we fix ourselves, and then we can help people around us. That's that's fixing the world. You don't there is no <laughs> you're you're not fixing a big area. You 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 do you first and then then you're then you're those around you. That is exactly right. And that is the best way to end the Hopium segment. Guys, that was our show. Absolutely amazing. Thank you all for joining us. Eve, thank you so much for being well, thank, an awesome thank you. special guest. How do people find you? They find me mostly on Twitter. I'm not going to give my home address, but okay, they come on. Yeah, if they come on Twitter, they can find me. Uh, my handle is Lock, so it's Z L O K, um, and that's about it. Come say hi, follow me if you want, block me if you don't. It doesn't matter absolutely awesome absolutely awesome so guys don't forget to like and subscribe don't forget to check us out on our audio only platforms apple podcasts spotify and anchor if you want to stream us sats check us out on fountain.fm you could stream us sats through breeze walton how do we end this fuck shit coins that's right fuck shit coins catch you all next except time, except my doge except my doge coin <laughs> it's deflationary yeah, I know. <laughs>